thank you, Farida, on the guarantee of learning. So much resonates with us as we also try and address issues of right to education, issues of vulnerability, learning challenges, and quality in the entire region. And I'm very pleased to say that Pratham and Pakistan have a very good and endearing relationship. And precisely as the Afghan minister also said in the beginning that we need to collaborate to, so that we can overcome inequalities and quality. I'd like to at this point invite our teacher from Pakistan from the Federal Directorate, Fawzia Ambreen, to say a few words. In the name of Allah, the most merciful and most beneficent. Minister of State Education, His Excellency, Mr. Baligur Rahman. Education Minister from Afghanistan, His Excellency, Mr. Farooq Wardak. All the panelists, respectable delegates and, delegates and guests, assalamu alaikum. This is Fozia Ambreen from Pakistan, and I'm working as Deputy Headmistress at Islamabad Model School, I-94. Let me tell you, my school is excelling, not only in academics, but in co-curricular activities in ICT. After completing my bachelor's degree in science education, followed up with a deg master's degree in zoology, I have decided to upgrade myself once again. And nowadays, I'm pursuing a master's degree in science education. Because I believe that the process of learning should never stop. I have been teaching for 8.5, eight and a half years. Although I joined the Federal Directorate of Education as a trained teacher, but before my, before my formal joining, I was exposed to a three weeks training session. And I consider it as a life-changing experience. Because it made me realize that whatever I have got from the theory for my graduation is just a drop in the ocean. I was exposed to some exciting and innovative trainings that helped me to transform my classroom to a place where children could have freedom of choice for to learn at their own pace. I ensured that it is a happy learning space. Encounters with in-service training programs from time to time have urged me to become a lifelong learner and helping me to explore something new each time in myself. One of the key areas of my professional interest and stimulation is inclusive education. The philosophy of inclusive education seeks every child to be included in the school setup. It focuses learning beyond gender, different socioeconomic problems, religious and ethnic grouping, and health issues. It deals with the mainstreaming of children with minor disabilities. It made me understand how sadly we stigmatize and label the children who are simply different, marginalizing and hurting them. Inclusive education helped me to identify varied needs of children with respect to learning, vision, behavior, development, and so on. Before this, nobody in my school, in my team, could think about autism, attention deficit hypersensitivity disorder, retinitis pigmentosa, cochlear impairments, and so on. Now we are maintaining the case histories of such children by making portfolios. We are facilitating them by providing magnifiers, hearing aids, wheelchairs, crutches to facilitate their learning. For teachers who wish to achieve professional excellence and standards, it is vital that they are exposed to frequent trainings so that we can make them skillful facilitators and 
leaders, not in, only in ICT, but all over Pakistan. And in this regard, I think that the knowledge of computer is critical. I carry a palm top with me in my classroom. And I believe that it has made me more professional and efficient. I find out lesson plans, helping materials, suggestions from internet. It tells me, how can I help a child with a specific special need? I believe that is a good AV aid and it is helpful in catering large classrooms. Beside the usual things, we have also developed a very strong bonding with the community and the parents. We let them feel that our school is their own school. We are there for them. They can come to us anytime. And the result is they are participating actively and always eager to work for us voluntarily. Now to promote quality education and send percent literacy, I have some recommendations. And that is number one, all the schools should be made inclusive and there should be uniformity regarding physical facilities, human resources, assessment and evaluation. There should be one national curriculum that has an eye on the future and needs of the future citizens. That has a local, national and international dimension. <clears throat> Child labor is a big obstacle in achieving 10% literacy rate. The existing schools can be opened up in the, morning sh in the evening shifts to provide formal as well as skill-oriented education to the working children. To increase the physical capacity of the existing schools to accommodate learners, the existing infrastructure should be expanded. In Pakistan, we have a shortage of science and math teachers. So the government needs to hire well-trained, well-learned, motivated, motivated people who can develop scientific attitude, promote concept-based learning, and ensure high performance. Nelson Mandela once said, Education is a powerful tool with which you can change the world. This is the time when we have to invest in education more than we have ever invested to change our Pakistan. At the end, I want to say that although there are a lot of challenges, such as inadequate resources, high enrollment with little physical capacity, overcrowded classes, overloaded teachers, and so on. But the morale and the targets are high because I believe that we must aim high. It is said, shoot for the moon. If you miss, you would land among the stars. So we are accepting the challenges because we, are, we know that they open up new vistas for progress and development. All I want to say, if we want the better future of Pakistan, we should invest in training the teachers, finance education for achieving high learning for our children and indeed quality education. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fazia. Very inspiring and inspiring because it's talking about all those complicated issues which is not happening. It's not a private school. It is the Federal Directorate of Education. It's a public sector facilities. How do we replicate this enthusiasm and application in the classrooms? With that, I would like to request Mr. Gong uh, Jo Kim, Director, Asian Pacific Regional Bureau for Education, UNESCO Asia, to come and say a few words. Thank you, Madam Chair. His Excellency, Mr. Mohammad Paligur Rahman, Federal Minister of State for Education, Training, and Standards in Higher Education, Pakistan. His Excellency, Mr. Farooq Wadak, Minister of Education, Afghanistan. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by thanking you all for being here to help launch UNESCO's flagship report, the 11th Education for All Global Monetary Report. The report presents an important message and the extent of the global learning crisis that is hitting 
the disadvantaged hardest. No fewer than 250 million children are not learning the basics in reading and mathematics, of half of whom have actually spent at least four years in a classroom but are still not learning. This crisis affecting around two-thirds of children in South and West Asia. Globally, this crisis is costing around 129 billion US dollars annually. It is also leaving one quarter of young people in low and lower middle income countries unable to read a single sentence. While showing the extent of the challenges that lie before us to ensure that all children go to school and learn while there, the new EFA Global Monitoring Report shows us positive examples of change from countries such as Bangladesh, a champion country for the United Nations Secretary General's Global Education First Initiative, which has committed to eradicate illiteracy in its country this year. We must learn from this energy and these examples. They provide concrete ways for us to help change the status quo. Good quality teachers need to be at the center of reforms to overcome the learning crisis. Only by attracting the best teachers, improving the teacher education available to them, including to teach children in the early grades and to identify and support weak learners, ensuring that they teach while they are, where they are most needed and are motivated to remain in the profession with a competitive career and pay structures, will we overcome this problem? Achieving this ambition will require the energies of all those here today. Children have the right to a good quality education, regardless of whether they are rich or poor, boy or girl, living in a remote part of the country or capital city. It is up to us all to help provide it. And yet, the EFA Global Monitoring Report shows that only a third of children of primary school age in this region are failing to learn the basics, basics still. We must take hope, however. We can achieve our ambitions if we try. UNESCO is fully committed to working towards ending this global and regional and national learning crisis. As part of this commitment, we are collaborating closely with Education International as part of the year-long Unite for Quality Education campaign. At the launch of this campaign during the World Teachers' Day in October last year, partners renewed their commitment to quality education and affirmed their broader goal of mobilizing 30 million teachers and education professionals to unite with parents and students for a quality education. The day marked a clear ambition among multiple partners, including the Global Partnership for Education, the Global Education First Initiative, and the UN Special Envoy for Global Education to tackle this learning crisis before it gets any worse. UNESCO's interventions in this area of teachers include support for evidence-based policy formulation and strategic planning, mostly through national capacity development. Thanks to financial support from the Global Partnership for Education, UNESCO and Education International are now also joining hands to develop capacities of teachers and teacher organizations for their effective participation in social dialogue and education policy formulation, an issue that the EFA Global Monitoring Report identifies as lacking currently. The EFA Global Monitoring Report provides an indispensable set of recommendations based on evidence from around the world to support this work. First and foremost, the report recommends that we must make sure that all children have teachers who are well-trained and highly motivated, teachers who can reach out to learners who need the most help. In many countries, perhaps even in, our, in your own, children from rich 
or urban backgrounds get the teachers with the best training, pay, and resources. Less fortunate children often have teachers who are untrained or insufficiently trained and teach in overcrowded classrooms with few resources. The 2013-2014 EFA Global Monitoring Report shows that this picture can be changed by giving every child an equal chance of having a good teacher, which means making special efforts to reach disadvantaged children. Afghanistan has made ambition, ambitious changes to its recruitment policy for teachers, aiming to increase the number of female teachers by 50% by 2014 with monetary and housing incentives. Bangladesh has also recognized the need for more female teachers, especially in rural areas, and set up safe housing to encourage them to take up profession there. Why should children in rural areas have a lower quality education just because where they live? The report also reminds us that education quality improves when teachers are supported with the teacher education before and during their careers. It, it deteriorates if they are not. Pre-silver education is vital to provide teachers with the skills to teach multiple grades, ages, and abilities in one classroom. For example, a project in Sri Lanka, <clears throat> in Sri Lanka trained teachers to develop lesson plans and grade appropriate tasks for classes combining grades four and five. Suitable curricula and assessment tools are needed to help teachers. To teachers. India has adopted an active-based learning model in government primary schools in the state of Tamil Nadu, which has had great positive impact on learning outcomes. This shows that a classroom-based learning process that generates internal feedback to regulate and improve learning can be effective on a larger scale. And the report shows us that we must take actions now if we want to break down disadvantages. If we, are, if we are not, they will last for generations to come. Innovative projects need to be set up, such as Pakistan is implementing, introducing interactive radio programming to help grade one pupils in remote contexts who may otherwise not have access to enough quality teachers and teaching resources. Unless we act now, we will not be able to say for sure that the granddaughter of a girl living in poverty in a poor country will not be facing the very same challenges to go to school as girls do today. Equity is about giving each child the same rights and can, and can only be achieved if it is written into policies. Bangladesh has, for example, prepared a monitoring framework in its education plan that will specifically track progress in enrollment ratios across different groups of children depending on their household wealth. Practical steps such as these will enable countries to assess, this, assess which children need the most help and make, sure, make future education policies far more effective. There is a lot of work to a lot of work to do, and to make changes <clears throat> of this scale, countries will need international support. Yet, despite the efforts of poor countries in supporting education, basic education is massively underfunded by 26 billion US dollars a year, and aid to these countries is declining at a time when they need it most for the final push to achieve education for all goals by 2015. 15. Today, we hear for certain that many countries will not have reached the education for all goals by 2015. Universal primary education will be missed by a wide margin. At this point, let us remind ourselves that the vision to provide quality education for all began 24 years ago 
and this region called Asia Pacific in Jomten, Thailand, and will end in 2015 next year in Incheon, Republic of Korea. I believe there is no more powerful case than this current status quo for placing education for all children and young people, regardless of their background, at the heart of global development agenda after 2015. The current situation also teaches us that we must ensure that countries have the resources they need to implement their plans after 2015 as well, in order to be able to provide children with the education they have promised them. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for, it's time for all of us to act now before it is too late. Unless we take action now to boost teaching worldwide, the learning crisis could last for generations to come. Thank you very much. Ms. Khaldia Jasmine from Bangladesh Black System. Again, another very endearing institution which has done marvels for education innovations, not only in Bangladesh, regionally, but also internationally. Khaldia? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. It is a moment of immense pleasure and pride for me to represent the teachers of Bangladesh at this ceremony of the regional launch of Global Monitoring Report 2013-14. Thank you for inviting me to be, to be a part of this ceremony. I am Khaldia Yasmin. I have been teaching at Bragg Primary Schools since 1989. I am 46 years old and I have two sons. My elder son is studying B.A. Honors in English and the youngest, younger is in class 10. Before no one knew me, I was only a housewife. But after I joined Bragg as a teacher, people from my community know and respect me. I can proudly say that I work for Bragg, which is one of the largest well-known and well-established NGO in the world. I work in the non-formal schools of Bragg. These schools follow one teacher, one room, and one teacher concept. One teacher teaches the same group of students from grade one to grade five in one classroom. Each group of students completes a cycle of five-year curriculum in four years, and I have completed seven such cycles. Generally, I work six days in a week. Currently, in my school, there are 33 students, of which 65% of them are girls. Dropout rate at my school is 0%. For the last 25 years, I have been working for Bragg, Local parents and my students love and respect me a lot. Students in my class are from disadvantaged background. That is, they are poor, mostly girls and children with special needs. And they don't get any support from their parents. So I help them. I had four children with special needs in my classroom who were moderately vision impaired, Bragg helped them with eyeglasses. In Bangladesh, children with disability are shy to interact with people and the society, since they are ignored by the society. Bringing them in school creates awareness regarding the importance to include them in the society. Including these shy children with special needs into the school was a challenge for me, since they were ignored by the other students. However, I managed to maintain a balanced learning environment. As time passed, the students opened up to each other and they became friends. I also had four children who were from a single parent family and one who was an orphan. In my experience engaging the students into co-curricular activities after school and also
Involving the parents into school activities helped retain students. During the meetings with the parents,